Hello, welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Ken Rubin, and with us today is Nick Davidson. Nick is the health director for the Midlands Public Health Region in South Carolina. And we're here today to talk about his thesis, Assessment of Public Health Recovery Readiness. Nick, um, what is the problem that your research was trying to address? The literature seemed to indicate that the challenge that public health faces is that there truly is very little some assessment has been done, but there's very little guidelines, very few guidelines for what public health should do uh, in a disaster. And, and particularly not just any disaster, but how we respond. We're typically very good at response. Um, where we suffer is in recovery. And so the literature, when we looked into it, uh, was showing that public health uh, does a great job of getting to the, the scene responding to the event, but then when it comes to looking at two months, three months, six months, a year out from the disaster, that there really isn't guidance as to what public health should do, how they should respond, how they should, uh, what responsibilities they have to fulfill during that long-term time frame. Okay, you looked at a number of processes in different states. What method did you use to assess the plans of each state? Sure. We certainly thought that it was going to be useful to look at the plans because if we can determine uh, what is currently in the plans, maybe we can determine some guidance for public health moving forward as far as the uh, different components that we should really be planning for. So uh, we took the plans of several states and, and we focused on those states from Texas through Virginia, so across the Gulf and, and up the east coast of Virginia. We thought that most likely those states had a fair amount of experience in dealing with disasters of one sort or another, so that that would be a good place to start. Uh, certainly if any state was prepared to respond to an emergency, that uh, those states would have a fair amount of experience and maybe we could learn something from them and spread the, that information uh, around to other areas of the country. So uh, what I did was I was able to, uh, working with a number of folks, put together an assessment form effectively. Really, it's a, an abstraction form. We're trying to abstract data out of different plans. And so put together a form whereby all states were scored on a, one, a zero through four scale on their readiness to be able to meet what the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, has uh, mandated essentially that states should look at as we move into disaster recovery. So that abstraction form was really, it became crucial to be able to, to use that form to fairly score every single state that we were looking at. There were a set of nine states as I, as I mentioned earlier and we took every component that the CDC said should be in a recovery plan and scored them zero to four. Okay, so based on that what did your findings indicate about the public health readiness of those states? I was really surprised, actually. Uh, I, I thought, as I had said earlier, that nine of the states, that the, the nine states that we were looking at, were quite prepared to respond, one would think. And uh, there were some areas that some states really excelled, but there were also some areas where uh, the findings were not as uh, robust. The preparedness is what was not as robust as, as I would have personally anticipated. So of the assessments, 79% of the components we looked at for all the states scored a zero on the zero to four scale. And like I said, there were some areas that were very strong, some areas that were, were not so strong. Uh, but that was more, uh, that was a greater percentage of, of zeros than, than I expected. I should give credibility to the states though, because they all have worked uh, very hard to try to meet the CDC grant deliverables and the CDC guidance that exists. However, the guidance is very new. Uh, the CDC guidance came out in 2000, early in 2011, and so it is still a new process that the states are getting used to. Those are new expectations. The states have done a lot over time, but really, as I said, earlier, there is little to no guidance that has truly existed. This is really the first of its kind. And so my research was interested to see 
So to what extent have we implemented some of those changes that the CDC has suggested and maybe find out the areas that we really need to spend more time focusing on over time? Okay, great. Lastly, what, what areas of improvement were most obvious or glaring to you? There were several things that, that really came to mind. Um, the, the data seems to indicate that continuity of operations planning is an area where we can really um, reap some benefits because the amount that has been done to date in COOP, continuity of operations planning, is relatively minimal. There, there are several items, several components in the CDC guidance that are related to COOP. And most of the states on most of those items scored relatively low, uh, so say a two or below. And so COOP is, is one area where they could really, uh, where, where I think as a nation we could prepare better for long-term disaster recovery. We've done some COOP planning as it relates to emergency preparedness and you know, one, two, three, 10 weeks maybe afterward, but that long term up to you know, a year or longer, we, we can really make some, uh, some headway in those. Another area is truly understanding what recovery is. There are so many agencies, and, and you and I know a number of them, where disaster recovery to them is basically getting their people back into their buildings doing their day-to-day -day jobs. And true recovery planning is enabling the community to be able to recover and be resilient long-term. And so many of us, and including the states in this survey, and, and I'm sure others that we can both think of, did not or, or uh, have not yet really looked at true community recovery. So that is an area uh, to be looking at. And I think part of that comes from the fact that we've always had emergency managers, state emergency management, local emergency management, federal emergency managers to lean on when it comes to recovery. Because recovery typically has meant FEMA disaster declaration type recovery, giving money to local communities so that those local communities can recover. And recovery in the public health sense, recovery in the post-Katrina world truly uh, means more about putting a community back together and enabling those residents to be able to live the lives that they want to live. And to date, that is not something that public health has, one, been instructed to do, uh, and two, been good at or comfortable with. And this research points us in the direction that uh, it's an area that w where we can really truly see some improvement and hopefully reap some, some huge benefits over time. Okay, great. Well, thank you for sharing that with Viewpoints today. And we, we, we know this is an incredibly important arena, and we really appreciate your hard work and dedication to this thesis topic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.